Yes, Thor Dykow here. It's this week on Blu-ray and DVD, and we start with a masterful movie, Matthew McConaughey, in the role that could just land him an Oscar, Dallas Buyers Club. Have a look. Mr. Woodruff, you've tested positive for HIV. Have you ever used intravenous drugs? Have you ever engaged in homosexual conduct? Homo, homo. Did you say homo? You made a mistake. Cause that ain't me. Mr. Woodruff, we estimate you have 30 days left. Newsflash, y'all. Ain't nothing out there can kill Ron Woodruff in 30 days. Drugs. They just released the stunning performance. I mean, the movie is great, but it is elevated impeccably by Matthew McConaughey, who, who gives the finest performance of his career. And not only that, but Jared Leto as the transgendered Rayon. And the two work beautifully together. This is a fascinating movie, mainly because McConaughey goes from a homophobic Texan party animal uh, to a champion for the cause against AIDS and uh, a real believer in uh, the community. And to see that kind of character development and an arc in the film is amazing and he still maintains so much humor throughout all this darkness and as he's dealing with this AIDS uh, you know a diagnosis and dealing physically with what it's doing to his body ravaging it the two of them lost an amazing amount of weight they put everything they could into these roles and they deserve to be honored for it Dallas Buyers Club one of the finest films of 2013 so check it out now it's actually still in theaters amazingly too all right next we're gonna switch gears and talk about science fiction based on the classic best-selling novel which became a big series Ender's Game this stars Asa Butterfield in the title role. Take a look. If you succeed, you will be remembered as a hero. He's abandoning his entire fleet. He's in command. There's no stopping him now. In three, two, Another great cast in this one, including Harrison Ford, Haley Steinfeld, Abigail Breslin, Ben Kingsley, and Viola Davis. Uh, there's fears of an alien invasion growing, and Earth's international fleet recruits an unlikely leader, a young and brilliant boy played by Butterfield. You know, this movie had an interesting little twist. Uh, it defied a lot of the uh, typical genres that uh, you see in these science fiction movies, so it wasn't a throwaway. There was some intelligent behind it. It had a good crafted story and some decent special effects, so it looks great, and it's got some good performances, so there was some meaty drama to it. And and a, an interesting little backstory too. So they did a pretty good job. I mean, if you're a purist and you like the book, it's not going to follow everything as they do when adapting these uh, these science fiction novels. But it's an interesting one for uh, the young adult crowd, and uh, it didn't really pander to the lowest common de denominator. So you can check out Ender's Game, full of good thrills and uh, some insight as well into the topic. Next, we're talking about oh, this is where it goes downhill fast. The Counselor. Ridley Scott directs this one, and Michael Fassbender stars as the Counselor. You never find. Out his name, but he's a lawyer who gets in Body over his problem. head when he uh, dives into a treacherous drug deal for some quick cash. Euros. Now, on paper, this did totally work. Brad Pitt, Cameron Diaz, Javier Bardem, and Penelope Cruz all seemingly sizzling in this adrenaline fueled thriller, but it was so bizarre. With a screenplay from novelist Cormac McCarthy, you think that it would have been great, but there were so many non sequiturs and tangents in this movie that go nowhere, so many pointless conversations. And Cormac McCarthy, a great writer known for No Country for Old Men and The Road, but the movie never really comes together. It's got some good potential, some great acting, uh, but that's a pretty good scene there, I have to say. But other than that, though, it's a total Counselor. miss, and uh, some of the uh, conversations were just bizarre in how they didn't reflect at all where the plot was going, and it seemed like the movie was so in love with its own screenplay, squandered potential for all these great guys. You want to give the counselor a pass. No. Next, we're talking about a film out of Saudi Arabia called Wajda, and this is about a young girl whose only aspiration is to get a bicycle, and and in a country where uh, there's a lot of issues with yeah, gender equality uh, and uh, people don't want young girls riding around in bicycles because, uh, you know, it's uh, dangerous to their virtue, she kind of sets out and tries to defy that. This is an interesting film. The first feature shot entirely in Saudi Arabia and it features Saudi Arabia's first female filmmaker. It was also the submission uh, to the Oscars. Sadly, it wasn't nominated for uh, Best Foreign Language at the Oscars, but it was submitted, making the first time that Saudi Arabia com com competed in this this kind of prestigious nomination. A beautiful little story about this young girl defying the odds, and it never gets really too dark. It's quite funny and lighthearted, and just a fascinating look at uh, equality and uh, religion in uh, modern day Saudi Arabia. A great film. Don't let this one pass you by. If you like foreign films, make sure you check out Wajda because it may have passed you by in the theaters. Great film. I can't say enough about that one. All right, speaking of great films, Alex Gibney is back with another incendiary documentary, the one you've been waiting for The Armstrong Lie, and basically, 
He went out in uh, October 20, uh, 2009, actually, to do a story about the uh, return of Lance Armstrong. But when the doping scandal hit, he shelved the documentary and then came back in 2012 and decided to tell a very different story. Here you go. There are people who have really been ruined. Lance wanted to humiliate Frankie, and he wanted to get back at me. From that point on, I was shunned, banned from everybody, and a lot of people, you know, would look at me, shake my hand. That celebrity is what gave him such immense power. Simply, you don't recall just how many times I have to say it. This is not a story about doping. It's a story about power, and the story became hanging on to that power. But more than anything, I, I yeah, can't this is fascinating that. because for one thing, you see what an egomaniac dead. Lance Armstrong is, but he's very candid in this movie. And I love the idea that they set out to do this film about his uh, unprecedented rise and his return, and then basically wanted to tell his scandalous fall from grace. So it's got all of that. It basically takes place just after that explosive Oprah Winfrey uh, interview that he did, and it's full of interviews from Armstrong himself, his former teammates, and cycling experts. If you want to get the full meal deal on the Armstrong lie, check out Gibney's uh, documentary. It's powerful stuff and quite the story. And there are things that um, uh, Lance still maintains about his innocence and the fact that he didn't lie. But uh, there's two sides to this story, but it is a great documentary. Another hit for Alex Gibney. Okay, we're going to switch gears once again. A classic coming to Blu ray for the first time, courtesy of Disney. We're talking, of course, about The Jungle Book. And you know what? This is a very interesting film because it was the last animated feature, the last film really that Walt himself worked on. Sadly, he passed away in 1966 before the movie was finished. So he never saw the final product, but it is regarded as one of the most lighthearted Disney animated flicks. Amazing songs by the Sherman Brothers and great characterization uh, with the interaction of Mowgli and Blue and Bagheera the Panther as well as Shere Khan. It was also one of the first Disney animated flicks to feature celebrity voices in the role, so that was very different at the time. Uh, of course, Phil Harris uh, voicing the uh, the lovable bear Blue there. So it looks amazing on Blu-ray, you guys, and it's got some great behind-the-scenes features. Uh, it's just full of great songs, Verve, excellent animation. Look at the beauty of it in the hand-drawn style. So uh, check out The Jungle Book if you're a collector of these uh, Disney movies. This is just a beautiful one. And we close things out. Pa pa pow Yes, Sylvester Stallone bringing you the heavyweight collection. All six Rocky movies together for the first time in one knockout collection. This, of course, is from the first one, but you get all six in that one, plus three hours of bonus features, including a new featurette, eight millimeter home movies of Rocky, and also in the ring, a three part making of documentary. You know what? Uh, it's got quite the legacy and quite the iconic character behind it, so if you uh, enjoy Sly in that, that role as Rocky Balboa, get this collection. It's all you really need, all six movies together at last. Because somehow, there you go. Beneath. The slow makeout. Gotta love that. And the narration in the trailer. That's it, guys. A jam packed edition this week. I'm Thor Dykow. Check me out on Twitter at Thor Dykow. Let me know what you thought of these titles. We'll see you next week on BTVancouver.ca.